In the year 1997, the future is in chaos and turmoil. Mankind is on the brink of extinction. Brave survivors band together and build a time displacement apparatus to receive a signal from a parallel future. This transmission is the Boondocost. Welcome to the Vundacast, the official podcast of Vundablog.com, the home of whatever, the podcast, the podcast that favorites the IRS app because they owe us money. Yeah, it's pretty crazy that the IRS has their own app on the internet. They gotta go into the future. They gotta go into the future. I am Steven, your humble host and podcast provider, and with me, as always, is. The lovely, ever talented, and ever deductful Danielle. Yes, super deductful. I think it, I don't know if that's a real word or not, or if I just made it up. I think you made it up. If I just made up deductful, then copyright that Stephen. If boom. you have not filed your taxes, file your taxes. File them as early as you can, man. Makes it yeah a lot faster to get your refund, especially if you live in Florida. File your taxes earlier, or someone else may have already filed your taxes for you, because we live in a state full of crooks. Today's whatever is a midnight movie matinee, which is our film discussion show, and today we're talking about a classic, a soon-to-be classic piece of cinema called The Boy Next Door, starring Jennifer Lopez. Whoa. You may ask, why the hell did you pay money to go see The Boy Next Door? And we will answer, we did not spend one dime on The Boy Next Door. We had a Regal. Thanks to our Regal yeah. Crown Club card, which I've been a proud member of for many, many years. Yes. I often get free popcorn, free drinks, and free movie tickets. Yes. And I had racked up two, and one of them was expiring this weekend. So we had to go to the movies this weekend. We had to watch something. And American Sniper looks horribly overhyped. And it... Apparently it's not, but I... I'm, I don't know how to feel about that movie because especially since it seems like America, it's it's like literally the uh, Clint Eastwood version of the America song from Team America World Police. America, fuck, fuck yeah. yeah. It's, Sniping it, kids <laughs> and blowing brains up. It really seems like that. And I'm, you know, I read about Chris Kyle, the man behind the story. And I'm not so sure I want to see a movie that treats him like a American like a hero. hero. I mean, his military record cannot be cannot be argued against. He cannot be contested. But what he did when he got back, I think we can talk about that. But maybe Bradley Cooper delivers an insane performance that makes you know the the, the real life person. Seeing as how when Clint Eastwood made the movie, Chris Kyle's father said, "If you besmirch my fa- son's memory, I will kill you," and I believe him because I bet he has about fifty five guns. Um, I'm not really sure that they played the crazy up. I'm, I'm pretty sure that they glossed over the crazy. Do you think that his crazy. father uses besmirch often? Or if he's... Or I don't if it was just he was trying to class himself up I, for I don't think he even used the word besmirch. I think I made him sound smarter than oh, he okay. was. I'm pretty sure he's like, If you mess with my son, I'll fucking kill you, Clan Astwood. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That was discriminatory against rednecks. Proud rednecks. Good for you. <laughs> the Vundicast don't care what color your neck is. <laughs> We're just not fans of ignorance. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so I mean, I'm not saying the movie can't be good. I'm sure it's. it's I'm sure it's actually a very good movie. Clint Eastwood it makes good movies, but they tend to be a little heavy and uh, overwrought and heavy. And uh, especially this movie seems a little. Little intense, controversial, and I, you know, I like to get the full facts before I go. But I'm sure I'll. And we see didn't it. want a serious downer movie. This yes, weekend. that we was were, really more what it yeah. was. 
We wanted to go see Selma. I really want to see Selma. I'm just, I know that I'm going to, to be very, um, just looking at the trailer and reading articles about that movie, I, I get very angry and I get very like emotional and I'd love to see because I know it's going to be excellent. I love David Oyelowo. Uh, Oye I can never pronounce his name. It's horrible. <laughs> I'm so, oh my God. I apologize to you, sir. I'm a big fan of him and but I, yeah, I'm, gonna try. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm very like, I'm very, you know, I need to, I need to be in the right headspace to watch that movie. That's the kind of movie I need to be in the right headspace to watch yeah. because uh, especially with everything that's going on right now and you know what happened at the end of 2014, it's, it's very relevant and it, it makes me feel a lot of feelings and yeah. stuff like that. So, but, um, so we wanted to just go see a movie that for you know especially since it was free a movie would never pay money to see like i would pay money to see that's another thing too i don't want to go see selma for free i want to pay for it you know i want to let yeah, them know yeah, i support, support the movie yeah. and i think that it's fantastic and um you know anna duvernay the the director is so she's you know such a rare entity in hollywood a black female director well, you know, I mean, she she she's deserves, a unicorn. It, as sad as depressing as that is, she is a unicorn in the film world, and we need to support her and like tell her like, hey, we like your movie and want to give you money. So we picked we're like, what movie would we never pay to see ever wait, in our lives? Time out. Wait, what time? While we're what? talking about unicorns, real quick, and this is at the beginning of the podcast, mm-hmm. I would just like to mention that another unicorn, uh, an Asian American female director, Jennifer Fang who uh, we supported on Kickstarter for her film Advantageous, is screening at Sundance right now. Wow. And is one of the most highly anticipated films of Sundance. Oh, great. Starring James Urbaniak and uh, a wide cast of uh, Asian American minority actors. And it's like a, a future tale. I'm a Kickstarter backer for that. Proudly pledged 50 bucks, and I'm super psyched to see them having Go you know, see so Jennifer Fang's success. movie. Go. She's really nice, too. I follow her on Facebook, and I like all her posts. Yeah, she's super sweet. Yeah. Anyway, so we... Back to the movie we did not want to spend any money on. Uh, we're like, what movie would we never want to spend money on? We thought Women in Black 2. We thought, you know... Uh, Even though Women in Black 1 was very entertaining, but this so one just doesn't look, look like it's the same quality. Yeah. Um, you know, Women in Black 2 or some other throwaway movie. And then we're like, you know what? How about... Now... I hate Jennifer Lopez with a fire. Wait, wait, wait. You're jumping ahead. I'm jumping so ahead. we thought, hey, how about The Boy Next Door with Jennifer Lopez? Now let us continue. I. Steven hates Jennifer Lopez. That used to be on my MySpace profile back in the day of MySpace. That's like the one thing I had in my summary of myself was like, I hate JLo. I do not hate JLo. I just. The truth of the matter is, is I find Jennifer Lopez, aside from her looks, And her possible dance moves that we never really get to see anymore because she mostly just kind of wiggles around when she's on stage. She is the most mediocre human being I've ever met. Like, you know... Well, I've not met, but ever ever encountered in in my life, like in terms of like being around me. You know, I get it. Nobody wants to be average, but there's nothing really wrong with being an average person. There's nothing wrong with having a quiet, good life. You know what I mean? But there's sometimes, you know, there's people that you meet that are about as interesting as, like, unpainted wood. <laughs> and you, like, and you just kind of, like, wow, you know, man, this person. Like, everything they talk about is just the Tapioca. most... It's, like, little bullet points that they saw on Yahoo News. Mm-hmm. It's never anything, like, out of their own minds. They're just really, really... Just, that's what I imagine her to be like. I imagine her... She, to me, is the most mediocre actress... She's the she's a mediocre singer. I think that her PR team are truly the celebrities here because whoever sold her ass to become this glorious, glamorous, written about every move that she makes with her vagina spurns fifteen people articles. She wrote a book about her ex lovers and their relationship. I just I just don't. The, I will give her to her credit. I will give her this. She's pretty. She's really pretty. I think she's pretty. Or at least her people make her look really pretty. She's a good dancer, and she does a lot of work for minorities, um, Hispanic people, and pushing Hispanic actors, and doing productions for Hispanic, you know, productions. And so that, I will totally give her that. Good on you, Jennifer Lopez. I love you for that. But everything else you do, I just, 
I would ra- I, I can't. I just find, I just find her, her, every entrance she does into, cr- to movie making when she's actually in front of the camera and singing is so mediocre. I think she's a far more powerful and interesting producer, a far more powerful and interesting, I don't know if she's ever tried to direct. She might be a more powerful and interesting director. Probably not. You don't know. The only exception to this rule in her career is Selena. Selena, which she basically captured a moment yeah. when this girl, like, white people cared about this Hispanic girl for, like, five seconds. You know what I mean? No, people still care about Selena. White people? Yeah. I freaking... American people? Yes. Hispanic and I know this is ridiculous, Selena. but Stone Cold Steve Austin on his podcast Love Selena. praises Selena as one of the best movies is it Selena or he's Selena? ever seen. And, and tomato, tomato. Tomato, it's, tomato. It's all good. She's dead. <laughs> I think that she captured that moment, and I think that she did such... She really did embody Selena so well. And and it was... Yeah, it was a, it was a perfect moment for her. But like everything else that she's done, every foray behind the camera, or when she makes an album, I just... I can't. I just... Am, I find her so mediocre. I think that... And I mean, obviously, I'm not her... Uh, she's obviously doing quite well for herself, and she can tell me to fuck off all she wants, but it's just kind of like... I think she's so much better when she's behind the camera, when she's pushing other talent. I don't think her talent and I would totally should love, be pushed in front of the camera. I would totally love to hear uh, Jennifer Lopez tell the Funded cast to fuck, to fuck off. off. Yes, please. That would be fantastic. If someone could get us that audio clip, just like, fuck off Funded cast, that would make our day. Tell us that we are the worst. Yes. We're great. Anyway, so we went to go see The Boy Next Door. The Boy Next Door was a very inexpensive film directed by Rob Cohen. Who is the genius mind behind uh, the Fast and the Furious? The first Fast the first and Furious. The first Fast and Furious. He also was behind Triple X. Those are his two biggest hits. Yes. Then he kind of flopped a little bit with Mummy, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor, and Stealth. And uh, he's also responsible for producing one of my favorite movies, The Monster Squad. So he's been around the block. He's a very commercial director who's good at eyeing properties that have uh, appeal to a young demographic or like a, an underused demographic. Um, he loves action and adventure and mm-hmm. fun. So, I mean, this movie was uh, only $5 million. It was partially produced by Jennifer Lopez. She believed in the project enough to produce it. Um, it was written by a woman, Barbara Curry. So I'm going to shout out to the, all the female writers, even though this movie was terrible. It was terribly written. <laughs> I'm going to shout out to you, Barbara Curry. <laughs> Better luck next time. <laughs> but, um, and so it was a very low budget movie. So Jennifer, first of all, this, this movie is smart for Jennifer Lopez because I think she knows that she's not the most talented monkey in the, in the bunch. She's not. Like, she's not the most talented one. And I think that she, like knows that in order to stand out, she's got to do something, like... Bold and... Bold and inexpensive. Yeah. And, or, and, and titillating for the audiences. So she saw this project, she's like, okay, perfect. Small budget, thriller, very throwback to the early 90s, classics like Fear, and all those, like, what is uh, Enough? Her, her old throwback Enough with Jim Caviezel, where she was, like, the abused woman. She went back to her roots... Yeah. And she saved some of that enough fire for this movie. And so... she didn't take no shit. So basically, she she did super... Uh, making such a small budget movie, there was no way, especially with her name recognizable... Um, her name... Uh, recognizable name. No, my God. Why can't I? Uh, wow. That's not the word at all. Her name recognition? There we go. Thank you. Oh, my God. Hello. Because of her name recognition, there was no way this movie wasn't going to make back its money and make a profit. And and it's already happened. Because uh, this weekend, uh, it made $15 million. Tripled its budget. Tripled its, bu- tripled its budget. Made its money back. Number two movie in America. Number two movie in America after American Sniper. And so, good job on J-Lo. So, we went to go see it. Because, uh, you know, it looked ridiculous. And it was... Wait, but you're... Going too ridiculous. far ahead. You're How am I ahead. going too far ahead? Because first off, we are looking at Fandango. We picked this movie after watching the trailers. <laughs> he wants to go into the the cut, the very it, d- and then detailed. we start going into the reviews for this movie on Fandango. This is by M Rand Raid. 
Uh, five stars. <laughs> Best J-Lo movie so far. Best so far. So far. Because her she's... She's, she's only going into her prime now. Wait, I want to go into this. Every compliment I have read so far about J-Lo has, has, I'm sorry, has been a subtle form of shade. Because that one, best J-Lo movie so far, when you look back at her career, you're like, mm-hmm. yeah. And then Forbes magazine, when they were writing about the box office review for this weekend, um, when they cited J-Lo's Boy Next Door, they they said, and I quote, she is one of the most recognizable names in America. <laughs> Not talented or, you know, enigmatic. Recognizable. If that is not shade, I don't know what is. And I, I know the word shade is thrown around way too much lately, but I'm sorry. Forbes threw shade. For all the uncool kids, explain what shade is. Shade. For the uninitiated. Shade is, I don't have to tell you you're ugly. You know you're ugly. Okay. Shade is basically when you comment on something without overtly insulting the person and people know that you've just insulted them. Okay. Like, you wear the tackiest handbag on earth at a party and someone comes up to you and goes, oh my God, you know, your style is just so unique. That is shade. That's me telling you, bitch, your bag is ugly. Get the fuck out of here. You know, like in <laughs> Mean Girls, when she's like, oh my God, I love your bracelet. Where did you get it? Actually, no. Is that really shade? Because like after, afterwards, she comes back and goes, that's the ugliest effing bracelet. Nah, you know, that's not shade either. No, shade is when you say something and it's dripping with innuendo. And, and the person may not even know that you just did that to them. And then later on, they'll be thinking about it and go, this bitch thinks my bag is ugly. <laughs> That's what shade is. It's very hard to do. It And uh, they throw that word around way too much. But I'm telling you right now, when Forbes called her, when Forbes' best quote for her was, she's one of the more recognizable people in America. She that, banged one not, like one. Not actress. Not actress. Not like, you know, director, producer. She's <laughs> people. That was full on shade. Anyway. Best J-Lo movie so far is the title. Great movie! Exclamation point. Very sexy and seductive. Fifty Shades of Grey better beat this sex scene. Ryan Guzman was perfect for this role. No one could have done it better than him. If you guys Can't wait who... to buy it on Blu-ray. <laughs> Whoa! The guy's really excited. You sure it's okay. not a plant? A studio plant? Maybe. Um, if you guys want to know, Ryan Guzman plays... Okay, so this is the basic plot of the story. Um, Jennifer Lopez plays Claire Peterson, a teacher and wife and mother, and she is and she's at the brink of a crisis because her husband cheated on her, and she's left. It's been nine months since the incident, and she's all alone. And then in comes next door neighbor. Noah Sanborn, played by Ryan Guzman, who is a very sexy, Ab- um, abd- abdicious, uh, 19-year-old high school senior. He's not illegal, by the way. Some people were like, oh, blah, 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 we're just emulating pedophilia. I'm like, no, he was 19 years old. He was yeah, legal. But they they should have, you're going to do this. Go the full way make him illegal. No, because then, then, she's, be the bad, but then she's the bad guy. But that, but you can live in the ish in the shades of gray and not. No, just but then, I read 50 shades then of gray. she just basically just gets everything she deserves. That's what I'm saying. Like, okay, she's already making the mistake by sleeping with a student. Okay, but even though technically he's not her student at the time, she sleeps with him. And I'm not spoiling anything. They explain all this in the trailer, so don't yeah. even complain if you even really had an urgent desire to see the boy next door today. Um, so she sleeps with him, but. Yeah, I mean, she's, he's not her student, and he's 19 years old. Well, first of all, why is he even in fucking high school right now? Go to college, kid. Like, what He are you got doing? left behind? He wasn't that... He got left behind because of his tragedy, quote-unquote. His tragedy. His tragedy. And, uh, but he's, you know, he's of age. He's over age. There's nothing wrong... Well, you know, aside, you know, from aside your... From philo- the taboo aside from your older, philosophical younger. argument about your older women sleeping with younger people or older people sleeping with younger people... There's nothing illegal about what she's doing. It's just, it is wrong. Once he becomes a student at the high school, it becomes an issue because she will be fired no matter what because he's a student. Yeah. And that's an authority, abuse of authority. Um, 
But, yeah, she's not a pedophile. He's 19 years old. If he was a 19-year-old college kid and she fucked him, this would be a totally different movie. You know what I mean? And, uh, and so it's like, that's basically what happens is this sexy kid moves next door. Um, he's moved in because his grandfather needs to get, uh, some sort of, he's bone marrow, a bone marrow transplant. Surgery. He's all alone and his parents have died. And so he in comes a mysterious in a mysterious car accident. car accident, of course, very, very, uh, nineties, uh, soap opera lifetime movie. And he, he basically takes her son under his wing. Her son is played by, uh, Ian Nelson, Kevin Peterson, his name. Ian Nelson was adorable, by the way. This little kid was like a little, he looked like a cartoon. <laughs> he was precious. I wanted to pinch his cheeks. Um, but he's kind of a frail kid. He has allergies and he's not very, uh, you know, outgoing and confident. And so this sexy, older senior boy takes him under her wing and she's like, oh, he's such a nice boy. He's so sweet and wonderful. He literally acts like Cartman when Cartman is trying to like be extra nice to people. Yeah. The entire movie. You already know how crazy he is. And everyone's just cool with it. Everyone's yeah. just like, oh, this kid's just super He's nice. He's super nice. And super good looking, because that always but that's, happens. But see, that's what it is. You know, the only interesting commentary I'll give this movie, it's, it's true. People totally let handsome ass people act like assholes because they're handsome. And they don't see it. They'll totally act totally, oh, yeah, they're so nice. And they'll do the worst thing in the universe. And you'll be like, oh, but maybe, no, bitch, it's because you want to fuck him. It's not because he's a good person. Get over yourself. Like, stop it. Don't fall for that shit. But, like, I'll give it this. So, the, so the, basically, that's how the move, the plot of the movie. Sad housewife, sad, sad married woman, bangs, 19-year-old, ends badly. That's the sum of the whole plot. And if you'd no. like us to get into spoilers, or give you a spoiler warning, we can do so. Alright, let's get into... Okay, right, now our, our quick... Without getting into spoilers... Mm -hmm. Would you recommend this movie? I would recommend this movie to no one. I would recommend this movie to... Okay, fine. You want to recommend this movie to you? I recommend this movie if you want to laugh, and you really feel like uh, just killing some time. And it's on Netflix for free, part of your subscription that you pay for. I would never pay to see this movie in a theater. I would not pay to own this movie on a DVD. I thought... I would not pay to DVR this movie. <laughs> I would not pay for this film. I will not... Pay the not I am. Pay the Sam I am. <laughs> um, I thought Ryan Guzman's performance was fantastic. One of the... Best parts of the movie. That is, I'll give without him getting that. into spoilers. He actually was very good. I was very surprised that he actually had a bit of an ability to kind of portray this character in a very creepy manner. Because that's the thing too. He's got to be handsome, and then once he turns creepy, you got to be like, I don't care how handsome he is. He's fucking psychotic. Yeah. So he does a good job with that. So I would recommend it for if someone really wants to check out Ryan Guzman's acting abilities. That's a good thing to do if someone wants to laugh at some, uh, you know, some cheesy, schlocky, scintillating porn movie situation. Yes. Gone awry. Then this is the movie for you. This is the movie for you. If you have, if you like movies that think and feel and have genuine emotions, this is probably not. This is never the movie for the you. The place to go, the boy next door. So now the spoiler song. Spoilers, spoilers. These are the spoilers, spoilers. Beautiful. Spoilers. So, I mean, okay, yeah. Let's, to break down the movie as quickly as possible, because we don't want to talk about this movie forever, because it's, it's not worth more than, like, what, 20 minutes of talk? Maybe? Then, whatever. Um, let's start off with just every part. This movie is just so... And on the Vundacast, we don't like to... I don't like this to be, or the Vunda blog to be a place where... We just, like, hate on things for no reason. Or just hate on things. I like to make it about a place about love. So I did love parts of this movie. So it's okay to talk about Ironically. it. Ironically? Ironically, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I also didn't appreciate this movie very much. It's, it's just one of those movies that you know is a throwaway. And I think that it did as well as it did because, like they said, 
there really hasn't been a lot for the female audience recently. Mm -hmm. This is kind of the first movie. And so a lot, our entire audience was consistent when of... When we first went to go see it, we tried to see it on a Saturday night at around it 7. It was packed. And it was packed, and there was a group of girls in line to see it in front of us. Teenage girls. Teenage girls. 18-year-old, I think, maybe. Yeah, they had to have been 18 to get into a radar movie. Yeah, 17. At least. Mm -hmm. Um... And the, and they were all wearing the exact same outfit. They were all wearing the colors. exact same. Two of them same both had black and white. Kendall shirt pants. Kendall Miami outfit. I mean, if you live in Miami, you know exactly what I'm talking about. High waisted jeans and a crop top and shoes. Belly button out. Various types, heels, flats, but the same outfit. And I mean, that's but that's just teenage girls. I have no problem with that. Teenage girls dress the same. Most teenage girls dress alike. They dress like their peers. Nothing wrong with that. Crop tops are very 90s, by the way. So all you 17-year-olds acting like you're cool, uh, you just fucking wear what we wore. That's right. I'm old. Fuck you. You're just bringing it back like 20 years ago into the 90s. Okay? You better just start doing the cabbage patch. Um. So it was too full. We didn't want to sit through like a full theater and get bad seats or something. Yeah. And deal with like annoying people at... Saturday night at 7 o'clock. But it didn't matter because we went on Sunday at 2 o'clock and there were the same annoying people, except that they were now 20 years older. Yeah. So, basically, this movie consisted, the audience, both times we went to go see it, the audience consisted of Latina women of various ages, 18 to 34, I guess you'd give the age range. I would say 18 to 50 to 60. (laughs) 18 to 65. Yeah. Um, there was a huge group of Hispanic women in front of us, Cuban women, um, who spent half the movie on their cell phones looking at baby pictures inexplicably. I wasn't really sure why that was happening. This scene is tense. Quick. I must look at a I child. must look at this baby picture. I didn't understand that. And their phones were huge. They had, like, notes so that you just bright. Whatever. But see, that's the thing. I don't care if I go to a shitty movie that I didn't pay for. I have no problem. But if I had actually paid for this movie, I would have, uh probably started a fight yeah. um because i hate when people talk and are disruptive in the theater it is one of my biggest pet peeves ever um as i'm sure many of you who enjoy movies that is one of your biggest pet peeves too and, and we could do a whole podcast and on probably that. will on our movie, movie theater, theater confrontations etiquette. and what we think movie theaters could do to be better we should do that let's talk about that That's one day not today anyway so we went to the theater it was mostly hispanic latina women um of various ages, coming in big groups, I guess, like, having a lunch date and going to see this movie. So, you know, obviously they... And that plays out to the statistics that they did about the, how this was a huge draw for female audiences and stuff like that. And I just... I get kind of sad, I guess, that this was basically it for women this weekend. Like, this is what they had. That's why it was number two. Because we are. We're a huge portion of the audience. And we don't just go to see crappy movies with J-Lo in them. We see all kinds of awesome stuff. Mm-hmm. And the more good fare you make us, the more we'll go see it. But obviously a lot of women like J-Lo and love her and for some But people love some lowest common reason. denominator things. They also do love lowest common denominator things. Well, but us included. Yes. And they all love, and they love J-Lo. No, but it's also because they love Jennifer Lopez. Like there is like yeah. some weird thing. I don't, uh, whatever. Anyway. It's, it's like that thing where like, <laughs> she's doing it for us, man. But she, mm-mm. you know, like she's, rocking her own self. She's going to the Oscars for us, wearing those gowns with her boobs out for us. She's shaking her ass for She's us. She's the only one. She's dying for our sins. <laughs> She's the new Jesus. Jesus but, Jesus didn't have a cool nickname like J-Lo. He wasn't J-Try. Jesus. J-Christ. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> J-C. I like Jesus. Jesus. Hey, Jesus. What's up, bro? Um, so yeah, no, you know, so the audience was mostly women, and because we live in Miami, mostly Spanish women, and, um, yeah, it was, it was fine. It they, was... they played, oftentimes when I see movies, I watch movies differently from most people, mm-hmm. in that most of the audience, like, some movies, they played everyone the same, like, Guardians of the Galaxy, for instance, that plays an audience like a violin, and you laugh at all the right moments mm-hmm. together and stuff, but this movie... Me and Danny were laughing at all of the cheesy The moments. non-funny parts. The non-funny parts. And everyone was laughing at the forced comedy yeah, you can, that they had interjected into the movie. Yeah, you can tell who the they write this stuff for. And it's... 
I know we sound pretentious when we say shit like this. <laughs> because, and we're stupid because we love dumb action movies with Arnold Schwarzenegger in them and all those kind of things. So we're not trying to act like we're better. But it's just kind of like, what you know, at the point when you watch a lot of movies and you're actually really critical about the way you think about movies, um, it just gets kind of like, you see this ridiculous, shitty comedy that they throw in there. And it's just so catered to the certain audience, and they fall for like Kristen Chenoweth and all of her two honest, her two honest like sassy friend with the sassy haircut and like saying all the "Mm mm-hmm girlfriend, you gotta go out and get married, like you know what I mean. And she really was, and and just and she made all these middle-aged women jokes that were only funny to the middle-aged women in the audience. Um, Occasionally, I giggled because I love Kristen Chenoweth and I think she's a fantastic. And truthfully, let me tell you this right now. Every time Kristen Chenoweth is on screen, she stole the spotlight from Jennifer Lopez so hard. Yeah. Every single time. I mean, basically, all Jennifer Lopez had going for her in this movie is that she's really pretty. <laughs> and they you kind of like, oh, she's so pretty. They showcase it hard. I'm talking, her hair is always perfectly, it's either perfectly messy or perfectly coiffed. Her outfits were like, I mean, she's on a teacher's salary with these outfits. Like, yeah. what the hell? All of her clothes seemed... The way they tried to make her seem like a down-to-earth, relatable mom was that all of her her home clothes seemed to be from some sort of weird, slumpy sweater, like, fashion house. Like, the -the off-the-shoulder slump collection, like, an old navy. I was. And, like, her... All her sweaters were, like, really, like, oh, artfully slouched over one shoulder with her glasses. And, like, I'm reading because I'm so intelligent. Like, you know, stuff like that. You, I mean, you know, you're looking at Jennifer Lopez, and I'm like, you don't read books. <laughs> just that reminds me of one of our favorite <laughs> moments from this movie was uh, at one point um, uh, Noah San- Noah Sanderson or Anderson? Sanborn Sanborn Ryan Guzman's character Ryan Guzman's character he's uh, he's trying to ingratiate himself to uh, Jennifer Lopez's Claire character and. He gives her a first edition of the, <laughs> the Iliad. What does that mean? And they don't go into too much details. They don't go into details. They're just like, this is a because, first edition. Whoa. Because the audience won't care because they have no idea what the Iliad is. But like, it's like, what do they mean? A first edition of the Iliad? Did he go back in time? <laughs> the scroll? You know, now it would make sense if it was a first edition of a translation. That would make sense. Like a first edition edition translation of the Iliad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that that makes sense, because there are some very famous translations of the story. But, like, they don't go into that. Like, they don't explain that at all. And his excuse that, like, oh, I got it at a garage sale. No, you didn't, you fucker. You had that sitting around in your closet because you're crazy. Like, <laughs> And they should have touched back on that. Like, he stole it from a dead body, or he... <laughs> Or he, like, sniped it on eBay or something, like... No, they didn't need to go that much detail. No. It was just so funny to me, this idea. They knew they could get away with saying first edition copy of the Iliad because nobody in the audience or the boy next door even understands what that means. And I believe that was written, like, in, like, what, like, 300 BC? Yes, it was written on scroll. It was told... First of all, it was barely even written. It was told through oral... Yeah. It was an oral translation. Like, it was... <laughs> there's no first edition. It's just, it was very funny because it was just all they needed to make that way more intelligent was just one added line. It's a first edition of the trans of one of the best translations. You know what I mean? That's it. Now it becomes more intelligent. But literally, him going, it's a first edition of the idiot. It's like, oh, you like homework come up from his grades. No, it's not. Like, <laughs> so that was really funny. It was just funny the little. Things, you know, and they try to make them more intelligent. But I feel that they at least tried. Like, her classic stuff is kind of on point. And she's cool. Hey, you know what I mean. But, like, it was just kind of, it's, it's, you know, it's cheesy. It's cheesy. Yeah. It's cheesy. And I was, the whole thing is cheesy. Yeah. And uh, so the big spoiler thing of this movie is this movie is intensely creepy. And even the sex scene, which everyone thought was so scintillating, has, like, this creepy score behind it. Yeah, it does. It has, like, this really creepy score behind it's it. It's like, this and I guess this is a mistake score. <laughs> and everyone, I guess, is so turned on by this 
that they totally disregard the, music. the musical choices in this movie. It just feels like the music's like, this is a mistake. It's going to punch you in the ass, Jennifer Lopez. Like, don't fall for this. Um, The sex scene is very sexy, though. That I know one of the reviews you read on Fandango. What was it? Hot, hot, hot sex scene. It was pretty sexy. Um, okay, another review from Fandango by Pat Coco 2013. This one titled, geniusly, The Boy Next Door. Love it. The movie. <laughs> <laughs> Comma. The tension and anticipation is thrilling enough to kept you guessing. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? And Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> what? <laughs> what's next? Like, just, what's next? Kept you guessing what's next. <laughs> what's next in life? <laughs> <laughs> and Jennifer Lopez acts well as the character she portray. <laughs> He's like purred happily. Yeah. And now, to get the female perspective <laughs> on this, we go to a woman. <laughs> Directing and cinematography is world class. World class! <laughs> Gotta class this review up. <laughs> Gotta call them world class. <laughs> Both main actors, Jennifer and Ryan, acted well. So, overall, is a good worth to watch movie. <laughs> Who is that? Who is that? Pat Coco 2013. Pat <laughs> Coco 2013. On Thank you for the laugh. Oh my god. That's not the one about the sex scene, though. Anyway, the sex scene was pretty sexy. Um, J-Lo was apparently fully present at the sex scene. No butt doubles, no booby doubles. And he totally, like, grabs her boobs. He At one point, his boobs are her bra. Like, he, she got a hand, hand bra. Hand bra, yeah. She's got a hand bra on. That's the way she gets away from the uh, the nude scene. Except for the poor... I would just like to say this. J-Lo gets to go, I don't want to show my nipples. But the poor actress who plays um, Ali Callahan, who's like a throwaway character in this movie, Lexi Atkins, she gets, like a gets boob close total up. boob close-up. I'm very sorry for you, honey. I think, I think you should have fought against that. She was also in a movie that I'm dying to see now. Called Zombievers, yeah. I found on IMDb. That's like all so, she's been in. That sounds great. Zombievers. She, yeah. Enough said. Um, and you know, so, I mean, a lot of, the thing about this movie too is a lot of stuff gets kind of thrown away. And any emotional, like, they get some emotional, like, John Corbett's kind of a throwaway character. You start to feel somewhat for their relationship before it's like mangled and all this insanity. He's not, he's like, Half a character. He's half a character. He's basically a plot point and, yes. like, a plot necessity. It's... I don't know. It's just... The, the thing with these kinds of movies is you can totally see where if they had just taken a different turn or tweaked it a little bit, it actually could have been a more interesting and character-driven movie. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you really can see where... Sometimes with these movies, you just see, like, if only they had just written it like this... Or they had explained something. But, like, first of all, you know this movie's already going to be throwaway thriller because the first five minutes of the movie, they have to explain everything that's going on with um, Jennifer Lopez's marriage in, like, flashbacks. These terrible blue-lit flashbacks. As she's, as she's running, you just as get, she's like, running and crying in moments. Yeah. It's like she's memories of, of infidelity. And, it's and then just, it's, like, nine months later. You don't need to see any of that. A well-acted scene where she's just like, you know what you did, get the fuck out of my house. Explain everything. This is this is the problem. They write these lowest common denominator scripts that are like, if they don't see it, they don't know what's going to happen. Like, what? That's what sub subtext is, people. Subtext. Like, that's what it's there for. Um, it doesn't even have to be subtext if you fucking say it out loud and she just yells at him like, you fucked your whore in San Francisco. You know what I mean? Like... Yeah. It's so... And the worst part is... They repeat it like 12 times. Exactly. That's what makes me upset. Is they do that whole sequence where she's crying and upset, but the entire moment is once again beautifully explained by Kristen Chenoweth within that scene. That's all they could have used. Mm -hmm. They did not need to have a whole beginning moment with the stupid running sequence. It was just an excuse to watch Jennifer Lopez run. 
J-Lo needs a running scene. I mean, seriously. But it's just kind of like, that's that's the problem with these movies. Is you see where, like, just a turn here or a turn here would have been more interesting. For instance, they always do in these movies when, the, when it's always an older person sleeping with a younger person. Especially when it's a woman sleeping with a younger boy and then it turns out to be a mistake. She only does it once. You know what I mean? Like, that's it. When she just won indiscretion, you can forgive her for that. No, man. Make it more intense. Make her fuck that guy like three times before make he Make it a relationship. Make a relationship. it a relationship before he starts going crazy. Because that's the thing. It's like, all of a sudden, you've turned this guy from zero to insane, right? Because of one night of, like, really good vagina. Like, I just don't... In a couple weeks. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he has a crush on her, but it turns into an obsession... And that's why, like, I think we were talking about movies that I really like, like this. I think one of the best movies I ever saw like this, and even though it's still kind of cheesy, but it's excellent, is Fear with Reese Witherspoon and Mark Mark Wahlberg. Wahlberg. Because she actually gets into a relationship with that guy. She actually goes in, all in, really starts to like him, her family likes him, and then she's like, oh my god, this guy is crazy. And everybody's on board with her. It's not like... Oh, he's fooling everyone into thinking that he's normal and she's the only one. You know what I mean? I always hate the way that they do these things in these movies where, like, the 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 girl always manages to look crazy and he looks... I mean, it's just so ridiculous. But, um, that's, you know, that was the thing is that they just didn't play... They just didn't... Little tweaks, little turns of the, the, the around one corner and it would have been a more like co- cogent movie but it really just felt like a bunch of scenes thrown together and at the end it's like he's crazy yeah um <laughs> so the big twist in this movie is that Ryan Guzman goes totally nuts nutcase and the way after sleeping with her one night one he night. develops a cr- an intense crush on her he convinces her to sleep with him it's really kind of more of a rape scene and it's sort of i it seems to be a, like a pre it's premeditated totally mhm cuz he records it yeah but that's like a teen boy move hypothetically like a stupid thing that a young guy but would do but it seems but it does seem um premeditated because he's like he knew he knew the kid was going to be gone. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the only thing I found interesting is that he didn't know she was going to go on a date. Or maybe he did. I don't know. No. See, that's, that's when the well, plot holes come maybe. through. Maybe. I don't know. Is it premeditated? Maybe he was going to try another night. But what if her date had gone really well with this guy and she loved him and fell in love? Well, you know he was at the gun range with the cop and told him exactly how to have that date. <laughs> to make her hate him. That's how he knew everything. Because he's a master manipulator, and if he tells you to hate your dad, you're gonna fucking hate, hate your, your dad. dad. Yeah. That was one of the weakest moments of the movie too. Was like, this kid is just gets played like a fiddle the whole he's time. So her that's son. The thing, they make him so malleable and like just sad. I, I. This is the one thing I do not understand. What the hell are they? I guess they were implying that. Okay, the throwaway female character, Allie. Who plays the um, the Kevin Peterson Ian Nielsen's character Nelson's character Jennifer Lopez's son has a crush on this girl Allie the and pretty blonde the girl. pretty blonde girl the throwaway pretty blonde character unfortunately <clears throat> and she seems to only go out with him because Noah like keeps giving her smoldering looks I guess so what they're trying to say is that she's going out with him because she wants to fuck Noah. And she's trying to do something nice to look good in front yeah, of Yeah, but I just don't understand how I would go up to a normal human being and say, Hey, look, I'm really hot. I'm gonna fuck you. But it seems like he but... didn't even go up to her and say that. It seems, seems like he keeps giving her these looks. Like, they didn't have a single conversation. In the movie. But that's what I wanted to see. Like, how do you trick someone into being nice to someone they don't want to be nice to? It, it didn't seem. It didn't seem like she didn't want to be nice to him. It just doesn't seem like she didn't want to go out with him because she's the prettiest girl in school and he's kind of a dork and he peed his pants and you know it sucks. Yeah, kids are mean and she's not really interested. But yeah, who the hell wouldn't be interested in this guy who's like super smoking hot? He's fucking hot as shit. You know what I mean? Um, so like that's when yeah, it just I think at one point you leaned over to me and he goes, Did you did he use the Jedi mind trick on her? Like, yeah. It felt like he hypnotized her. Like he felt like he just kept looking at her like I'll fuck you if you date my pathetic friend. In a look <laughs> In a look, he didn't have to wave his arm. He was that master Jedi about it. He was just like, I'll fuck you if you date my pathetic friend. I'll fu-. like 
it was just little things like that. Like, had he fucked her before that? Is that why he was like, oh, you should take my friend to the fucking dance? All this information would have been fantastic. Would have been fantastic and interesting to know. But instead, he looks like this weird psychotic Jedi who's like... And it makes Take Allie just look to... like a total bitch. It does, yeah. And I was actually liked her character. Like I, thought I did before that. I moment. didn't think she was that bad. Like she just seemed like, well, you know, it's high school. She can't be seen going out with the dorkiest kid in school. It's hard. It's hard. High school's hard. You know, it's it's stupid, but it's hard. Like she doesn't really. She's not really that interested in him. It could be one thing if she actually really liked this kid and she's not dating him because she doesn't want to look unpopular. And then it's like, well, okay, bitch, you need to grow the fuck up. But, like, it's just seemed like she's like, well, I know he's sweet and he has a crush on me. I'm really not that interested. But it's, I don't think people should be mean to him. Mm -hmm. And that's not a bad thing. You know what I mean? She's being a nice person. She's not expressing friendship at him. Like, I'm going to be your friend. Knowing, I think she totally knows this kid has a crush on her. Yeah. She it does not. And that's the thing, too. What I, what I didn't like is that up until that moment where he asked her to the date, and I um, asked her to dance, eat the kid, and then Noah gives her, like, that smoldery, like, take my friend to the dance look, and then she goes and fucks him later in his house. She just seemed she like... She doesn't even just fuck him. She the movie blows takes, him so hard. Like, a rated... Like, they were like, we're gonna get the hard R here. Yeah. And we're gonna get the close-up of the boobs, and then we're gonna get her face, and then we're gonna get Ryan Guzman getting a creepy blowjob. But up until those moments, she really just seemed like a girl that obviously was not interested in this character romantically, gave him no indication that she would be interested in... She didn't lead him on or act like, you know, that fantasy that stupid little idiot boys who live in basements have about women who are pretty, like, uh, come... I'm your friend. Like, as they flash their tits at you. Like, she was not like that at all. She was just a sweet girl who had to work in a hardware store and she was nice to him because she's a human being and she's doing the decent thing like she didn't want to get him beat up by bullies but she's not sitting there going I want to fuck you Noah and then but like one I mean Noah I'm sorry the kid the JLo's son but once fucking this guy gets involved she turns into this nasty skank like it's messed and she up do, the, the sad part is that she doesn't even get to perform exactly like that like have an arc where she turns into a nasty skank yeah she's just shown doing um uh these sexual acts randomly seemingly yeah besides that look and everything else with her was just like totally sweet nice innocent I was just very Here. upset what they did to her character. I think it was very mean. She just became this pawn in this guy's game. And I didn't like it. I didn't like it because I actually kind of liked the I actress, was... too. She was nice. She was pretty. And she didn't seem like a bad actress. Like, she seems like she could. She deserves to do more things. I was hoping that that wrinkle in the movie was going to play into the ultimate confrontation in some way. Mm-hmm. That maybe she got spurned by him, and so she, like, called the cops and reported him for something, or... I don't know, anything. The worst part, too, is that the sequence where Noah makes Ali get... Or, like, no, Ali goes into his bedroom and gives him a blowjob con- willingly. She She's there, you know, with her consent. He only does it to, to fucking make Jennifer Lopez's character, Claire Peterson's character, feel bad. The kid never finds out about it. Because if he did, he would have beat the shit. He would have been really mad. He would have been How like, hey. How did he not... He he wasn't... He didn't hear the music? I guess not. He must have been home. He must have been a sound sleeper? Yeah, he must have been asleep. And maybe from his window, he doesn't have the view of the bedroom. Exactly. His mom is the one who has the view of the okay. bedroom. So that's what I'm saying. It's like... He only did that to make her know, oh, I fucked this girl and your son is a loser and shit like that. Mm-hmm. But that poor kid never finds that out. I mean, obviously, at the end, when... Noah goes full psycho and tries to kill his whole family. He really doesn't care about that. <laughs> that's the least of his worries. That's the least of his worries. But, I mean, you know, it was kind of... It was really... Ne- I didn't like that at all. I think it was messed up. Yeah. And uh, Noah yeah. goes full psycho and his performance going uh, crazy is pretty fun. He has... There's a great uh, monologue they gave him where it's... Uh, a close-up shot that slowly pulls back as he's delivering this monologue. And I was praying during the movie that this was the part where he went full psycho and we're just going to see him talking to a corpse. You sicko. Or to, like, a decapitated body. And he's just talking to someone who's tied up and can perfectly well hear him. And I was disappointed. And then they save the reveal of the dead body for Jennifer Lopez's scene. 
And it's like it would have been so much more dramatic to get the audience on board with the fact that he's a cold-blooded killer now Mm -hmm. and ratchet up the stakes for when Jennifer Lopez enters the house. Then, and you still could have gotten the scare when the body's revealed to her. Um, I feel like that was a big misstep. And really all it goes into doing is him taunting the people that he's killing and showing his, like, pridefulness But it's just like, that's what this is. This whole movie is just a big misstep. It's just a big, predictable misstep. And I think that's pretty much the best way to sum it up. You know? We've talked about, we've talked about this for a little bit. We've talked about it enough? I think so. The the one other moment in this movie that was shocking and interesting choice was the movie feels so bland throughout. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden when they go to kill uh, Noah, they go for the straight up eye gouge with a needle. Yes, that was nasty. And it gets very visceral and horror movie. Yeah. Which was fun. But also felt totally out of place in the style of movie they were crafting. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of like they were playing a song on the piano and they hit some miss notes, but Many they played a melody notes. that everyone enjoys for the most part. So people dug it. Yeah. And one last review from Fandango, which. <laughs> I think will help us. Uh, This is, for in all fairness, this is now a negative review for the movie. This has uh, one star. Wait for it to come on Redbox by Antonio Escalera Jr. (laughs) Def not worth spending money to watch in the movie theater. J-Lo looked amazing. (laughs) As usual. Had she not been in the movie... I would have not spent my time watching it. Almost walked out, but hoping it would end differently or really good. Or really I, good. I stayed. Huge mistake. Very predictable. Story. Trailer shows all the good parts. Don't waste your time and money. The end. Excellent. So that's a very fair review of the movie, I think. Yeah, I think it's fair. I have been your host, Steven. I have been Danielle. And remember, kids, only you can prevent forest fires. Yeah. Is bullshit. Because (laughs) forest fires happen when there's dry and inclement weather in the, you know, hot states and stuff, and you can't, you can't stop it. A forest fire is going to happen. You can't stop it if you throw a cigarette butt in a bunch of dry kindling in the middle of the woods. Well, you can stop that. Yeah. But you can't stop all forest fire. You can't do it. It's impossible. <laughs> no, I guess you're right, Steven. Wundercast? Give yeah. it up for Wundercast, man. What an adorable name. Yeah.